Now, in recent months, we've been reporting on the drought in Somalia, the worst to hit the country in decades. Growing numbers of children are dying, hundreds of thousands of people are displaced, and they're facing famine. And the situation is made much worse by the ongoing civil war between the Somali government and the Islamic fundamentalist group called Al-Shabaab. But there are signs that the government is gaining the upper hand in that fight uh, as communities start to unite against the militants. Now, Al-Shabaab has been active in the country for more than 15 years. It controls large areas of rural Somalia, and they're mostly represented by these uh, blobs of grey on the map there. So it's quite a lot of land. Um, it's uh, estimated that more than half the population affected by the current drought is in areas controlled by the militants. BBC has uh, gained rare and exclusive access to Danab, that's the Somali army's elite special forces unit, which is leading the campaign against Al-Shabaab. And our Africa correspondent, Andrew Harding, joined them in the town of Bukure uh, to see what they were doing. This is the report. Let's go, let's go, let's go. These are Somalia's most battle-hardened troops, setting out before sunrise into a vast and furiously contested wilderness. All eyes alert for ambushes. This special forces unit, trained and funded by America, has spent years trying to crush an Islamist insurgency. And suddenly, in the midst of a terrible drought, they're making progress. We arrive in the ruins of a small town. A recent battle here saw the formidable militant group Al-Shabaab driven out. We managed to kill 60 Al-Shabaab fighters. But right before we reached here, they fled the town. And right before they left, they have burned down everything. They destroyed the shops, the houses, the water wells. Like, the people right now do not even have clean water to drink. This was your shop, was it? It was. But what's changed here is the mood, no longer of despair, but of determination. A popular uprising is underway. Locals telling us Somalia's drought has left them with no option but to help defeat the hated militants. In the last month or so, these troops have captured vast amounts of territory here in the centre of Somalia, liberating dozens of villages. But the question, and it's always the question here in Somalia, is how long can they hold on to the territory? Or will the militants of Al-Shabaab simply melt away into the countryside and then return? Al-Shabaab have hit back hard with a string of devastating bomb attacks, like this one in the capital Mogadishu. But listen to this politician who survived five attacks by the militants. You see, I am the one they were taking me. So this is you on a stretcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He now believes the momentum has shifted. Do you think this could be a turning point then against Al-Shabaab? Sure, this is a turning point. I believe that if the government gets advantage of this uh, opportunity, I think it will be the time that Al-Shabaab uh, Al will be defeated. That confidence is spreading fast. People in newly liberated areas no longer ruled by fear. Can you put your hand up if you are glad that Al-Shabaab has been driven out of your village? That was quite remarkable, to see a village like this with people finally ready to say, we're glad to see the back of Al-Shabaab because... They've terrorised villages across this region for so long. People have been too afraid to speak out, until now, it seems. Will it last? Somalia still faces huge challenges. Millions here are living on the brink of famine. But if the war ends, then real progress could follow. Andrew Harding, BBC News, Central Somalia.